Hey guys and welcome. So this is a video that I've been wanting to do for a long time and I finally have uh, all the equipment on hand uh, that I want to actually go ahead and do this video. So what we're going to be discussing in this video, you can see we've got a bunch of equipment here on the ground. Uh, what, this is, what this all is, is a bunch of different police radar gun units. Uh, we've got a bunch of different types and I've got a number of them laid down here on the ground to illustrate a number of different things. And uh, with all these different radar gun antennas, I'm going to be discussing the different technology that's available as far as actually clocking vehicles, uh, how things have changed over time, and uh, actually here, we'll just go ahead and uh, jump right into it. So basically what we're looking at here from left to right, um, over here on this left hand side we've got uh, three different guns. Uh, they each have a different style antenna. Uh, over here, this Stalker ATR has uh, two pyramid-style antennas built into it, really, really long ones. Uh, over here, we have a Stalker 2. This one has a circularly polarized antenna, very similar to all the ones over here on the right. And then over here, we have the Custom Falcon HR, which has uh, patch antennas in here. And so uh, each one is going to have uh, different pros and cons, and so, you know, there's kind of three different main ways of actually developing the antennas for police radar. Now uh, the most common way is going to be this one right here which is a circularly polarized conical antenna and with that uh, we've got uh, this is going to be the antenna for a custom Hawk. This is a full length antenna. This is an antenna from an MPH Python 2 FS. You'll see it has a little bitty cone right there. I'm kind of making it glow. Ooh, that's cool. And uh, this one's actually shorter than this full length one. And then this is going to be a very, very short antenna. Uh, these are all actually K-band, by the way. They're all going to be transmitting 24.125, 24.150. And so uh, this antenna here is from a uh, Custom Raptor RP-1, which is very, very similar to this one you can see right here, the Custom Falcon HR. This is the handheld version, and this is the dash mile version. And you can see they're really, really short antennas. So we're going to talk about how they're actually accomplishing this. And then finally over here on the right hand side we're going to be talking about different frequencies. We've got an X band antenna, we've got a K band antenna, and we've got a KA band antenna over here. And so we're going to be talking about the frequency changes as well and what impact that has on the antenna size. So awesome. I'm super excited to do this one. I get to totally geek out about antennas and radar and nerdy stuff so I'm super super happy to be doing this one. So let's just jump right into it. So first and foremost, uh, looking over here on the left hand side, you can see we've got three handheld guns. Uh, they all look pretty similar, well, different colors or whatever, um, but underneath the hood there they have very different technologies as far as how they're actually uh, clocking the vehicles and how the radar antennas are designed. Uh, the most common one, as I mentioned, is going to be this one right here. This is a Stalker 2. This has a circularly polarized antenna, which is uh, what most people these days are using. It's basically, if you're looking at, you've got uh, the antenna right here, and see this little line right there? Uh, that's actually the split between the antenna and then kind of the rest of the unit, the brains, uh, the display is actually back there, and then the battery is right here. Uh, if you take a look, I've got an antenna right here from a custom, or sorry, yeah, no, that's right, a custom uh, Golden Eagle. And you'll see this is also going to be a KA antenna. 35.5, uh, 34.7. It's a little bit longer just because it's got a little bit more going on there. And this one's connected to the rest of it. But you can see it's the same idea. Kind of same uh, diameter there to what we've got here. So uh, very small. It's a KA band antenna. And uh, it's a handheld format as well. Now there's also another KA band antenna which is going to be this one right here. This is the Stalker ATR. And this is actually the predecessor to the Stalker 2 right there. So you can see the Stalker 2 it's actually uh, more compact uh, than the Stalker ATR which is one of the main changes. Uh, on the ATR the antenna length is about this long or so versus on the ATR it's just this little nub right up here. Now the way the antenna works here in this one it's actually a circularly polarized antenna which means uh, the signal when it travels out actually travels in kind of this like spiral shape, this circular shape shooting forward as it goes out. There's uh, just one kind of cone-shaped antenna in there with both which uh, functions for transmitting the signal and it's also functioning as double duty for receiving the signal. That's not the case with the Stalker ATR. The Stalker ATR has actually two pyramid-shaped antennas, one on the top and one on the bottom. 
I forget exactly which is which, but one of it is actually for transmitting the signal, and then the other is actually for receiving the signal. So you've got two antennas in there. And uh, interestingly, most radar detectors at this point also have pyramid-shaped uh, antennas. Now, well, that's cool, but why does it matter, and what difference does that really make? Well, what you'll find is the Stalker ATRs, back in their heyday, uh, these are older guns, they're retired, discontinued, and they don't make them anymore. But back when these were made, they uh, had awesome performance, and that was actually one of the reasons I got this ATR, was their range is phenomenal. They actually had better range than a lot of the, uh, the modern guns with their circularly polarized antennas. Um, they don't make them anymore, anymore just because you can see they're so long and so, I mean, the whole antenna is this long and so they found a way to make it much, much more compact, which is wonderful. And uh, you'll see that, you know, once we get into antennas like this, which are even more compact. But uh, basically the idea with these is uh, they're really, really long range, um, so you can pick up cars way far away. Uh, however, I mean, that was like one of the reasons I got one of these. Unfortunately, I'm not really able to test that out for two reasons. Number one, um, I live here, it's kind of in the mountains. We've got a lot of hills and curves, and there's not a lot of long straightaways here, so I can't really test the super long range stuff like the people who may be in the, uh, the Midwest out in the open desert. You know, they've got multi-mile long straightaways. That would be perfect for a gun like this. But here where I live, I can't really do that, so I haven't actually been able to test it. Additionally, because these guns are now older, you know, maybe 20 years old for a lot of them, who knows, 10 years, whatever, depending on where they're made, um, the transmitters in, the, in there kind of start to die and not work as well, and so they don't quite output the same amount of power, and so even if I was able to test it, I wouldn't necessarily have the same amount of output power as I would if this was a brand new gun. So, not too big of a deal, but anyways. We've got two pyramid-shaped antennas in here, and one circularly polarized conical, aka cone-shaped, antenna in there. Cool. Um, in here with the Falcon HR, we also have a linearly polarized signal, just like the Stalker ATR. And so uh, this one here, when it's transmitting, is also going to be a linearly polarized signal. Now, why does that matter? Well. Uh, the gun actually doesn't work as well as when it's circularly polarized. There's going to be more impact uh, when you've got things like rain, which is going to be blocking the signal. The circularly polarized ones actually work better. Uh, the linearly polarized ones, not as much. Um, in here, instead of a, you know, a cone-shaped antenna inside, and instead of two pyramid-shaped antennas inside, you actually have a flat plane with a whole bunch of itty-bitty little patches. So it's a whole bunch of little bitty antennas that all work together. Uh, I'll go ahead and put a picture of it on the screen so that you can see what it looks like. And so, as you can see there, there's a whole bunch of little bitty patches which all work together to create kind of the experience of a larger antenna. And now, in effect, it's going to be kind of similar to the ATR in that you have a one set of uh, patches are all going to be working together for transmitting. The other set of patches are going to be working together for receiving. So like the ATR, you kind of have two groups. You've got a transmitter and you've got a receiver. And the same thing here on uh, these patch antennas, which again is different here than uh, the Stalker 2 with its conical antenna. Uh, with this one, you'll find that the range, unlike the ATR, the range of these ones is actually not as good. It's not that great at uh, picking up signals at a long distance far, far away. Uh, one of the benefits, however, is you get a very, very small antenna. Uh, you'll see, I mean, looking over here, like, you see how thin that is compared to kind of the conical counterparts? So you've got a very small, compact antenna. And so what you're losing in performance, you're gaining in compactness. So you've got that trade-off there. Uh, you're also going to have with these ones, uh, they take up a lot less power. And so that's nice if you've got a handheld unit like this, which has maybe a battery attached to it. Uh, this is going to be the power cable. You see it's got a cable there and it actually uh, plugs in for power. But uh, if you've got a battery there, it actually takes up less power so it runs longer, which is great when you're out in the field. Uh, additionally, if you have it plugged in, it's going to be taking less power from your vehicle's alternator. So if you already have a bunch of electronics in your car, like a computer, radio, lights, you know, a ton of extra stuff that police uh, have in their vehicles. Uh, you know, sometimes they'll actually like the lower power units because it's less stress on their vehicle electrically. So that's a nice benefit there. So everything kind of has its pros and cons and its compromises and trade-offs, right? So as so you can see, we've got uh, linearly polarized here, linearly polarized here, and circularly polarized right there. 
So, uh, oh, something I'm going to bring up is uh, in the video description, I'm going to link to uh, an article or two by 9C1, who has actually taught me a lot of this stuff. He's an awesome guy. He explains a lot of this stuff really, really well in terms of the physics and uh, electromagnetics regarding radar antennas and detectors. Like, awesome, awesome stuff. I really look up to and respect the guy. Uh, he's done some great uh, descriptions, actually, uh, explaining a lot of this stuff and great posts about it. And uh, since I happen to have a lot of the antennas here right now, I can do this video. I'm basically talking about a lot of the similar stuff. So if you want to read a little bit more about it, I'm going to link to his post so that you can uh, see it written there. But I'm going to go ahead and cover a lot of the same stuff here. So, uh, so you guys can see. We've got uh, our patch antenna right there, circularly polarized right here, and then uh, or conical antennas, and then two pyramid-shaped antennas in there. Awesome, very cool, good to know. Three different types of ways of doing it. Now uh, let's go ahead and move on to uh, different ways of actually shortening antennas. Uh, right over here that we're looking at in the middle, we've got three different types of K-band antennas. Uh, this is KA, this is KA, and this is going to be K-band. Uh, over here, these are all K-band. This right here is an antenna from a custom Hawk. This is going to be an older antenna, one of the first ones that came out on K-band. Over here, this is an antenna from an MPH Python 2 FS. And then over there, we've got an antenna from a custom Raptor RP1. You'll notice, obviously, they've got uh, different lengths as far as how big the antenna is. And, uh, you know, there's reasons for that. So starting with the longest one, this is the uh, kind of older original technology. This is a full length antenna. Uh, the thing I want you to notice is right here, it actually has a flat face to it. And uh, the reason is that there's basically a full length antenna there and uh, it hasn't actually been shortened. And so it has a flat face here. Uh, if we look now in contrast at uh, this MPH unit from the Python 2 FS, see how it has this little uh, rounded cone shape thing there? That's there for a reason. If you shorten an antenna, you're going to have some detrimental effects. Your antenna is not going to work as well, and there's going to be some phase errors. So what you can do because of those phase errors, um, kind of the compromises that you make from artificially shortening antenna and antenna, you can actually put this uh, round lens here on the front of the antenna, which will actually compensate for the shortening of the antenna. So if you'll notice, this one actually has a rounded cone in front of it or rounded lens, which is now actually really, really popular. If you look over here at all of these antennas, you'll notice they all have a rounded lens here in front of the antenna. So it's become a really common thing and it works really well. And it's a great way to actually shorten the antennas without actually being detrimental to the performance and uh, range and capability of the antenna. So older style here had a full length antenna shortened with the lens, and they're both K-band antennas with circularly polarized, like the Stalker 2, uh, conical antennas in here. Now, this is going to be an antenna for a custom Raptor RP1. Uh, this, again, is the dash mount version of Custom's Falcon HR, which is the handheld version. You can see it's, again, even shorter than uh, this MPH unit. And the way they've done this is exactly like the Falcon HR. Instead of the cone-shaped antenna in here, they actually have a series of patches. And so exactly, again, exactly like the Falcon HR, you've got your transmitting and receiving linearly polarized patches, uh, which are there to, uh, you know, they're your antennas. Great, cool. So again, same benefits as you've got with the Falcon HR. It's lower powered. Uh, you do, the compromise, have lower range and worse performance than a comparable uh, conical antenna. Uh, this is true both in uh, clear and dry weather, as well as especially in the rain. Uh, that doesn't mean that the antennas are completely useless in the rain. Uh, I live here in the Seattle area in Washington, and as you guys may have heard, we tend to get a lot of rain. That said, they definitely still use the Raptor RP1s and the Falcon HRs here, uh, even though we get rain. And so, I mean, obviously these ones will be a lot more popular on a motorcycle, you know, handheld, you can do that. These ones may be more popular on uh, in a car, but I've seen these uh, mounted on vehicle or on motorcycles as well, and because of the uh, flatter, smaller, more compact design, uh, they're a lot more popular on the motorcycles just because they take up less real estate, and you know every little inch and centimeter really matters on those vehicles. So that's cool. So we've got a full-length conical antenna, an artificially shortened conical antenna with 
a lens here on the front, and then a patch antenna, which is going to be our smallest, most compact, and low power version of the K-band antennas. Awesome. Now, finally, let's go ahead and take a look here on the right side of the screen. We've got uh, an antenna from an MPH K55. Again, same antenna from the same radar unit. We've got uh, the MPH Python 2 FS, and then finally the MPH uh, B3. So, you know, same manufacturer. X-Band, or actually, they're all three from the same manufacturer. Cool. Uh, X-Band, K-Band, K-A-Band. And what's the main thing that you notice looking at these three? The size, right? So we've got a big, huge antenna here. We've got a more compact antenna there. And then we've got the smallest antenna right here. Uh, the X-band units transmit between 10.5 to 10.55 gigahertz, kind of that range. Uh, K-band units are typically 24.125 to 24.150, kind of that range. So you're looking in the 10s and the 24s. And then the B3 KA antennas are like 33.8 gigahertz. So, uh, yeah, KA, of course, can be 33, 34, 35, kind of that range. But basically in the 10s, 24s, and mid-30s for the different KA band antennas. And so as you can notice, basically you've got the most, uh, well, the largest ones here are going to be the X-band. These are the oldest ones and the ones that originally uh, they came out with. Interestingly, you'll notice uh, how this X-band unit actually does have the cone here on the front, the lens, the lens on the front. The first, first, first radar antennas that came out were actually really similar to this K-band antenna, except in X-band, which means you have this antenna, but it was almost twice as long because it didn't have this lens on the front, and so it was this huge, huge antenna. It was so big that oftentimes they actually had to mount these on the outside of their vehicles, on the windows and on the doors, just because they were so big. So uh, this one actually is not going to be the oldest, oldest, oldest version of the X-band antennas you can get because it has the lens here in front. Uh, this is actually one that they were able to shorten just to make a more compact antenna, which is great. I think it's like seven point something inches off the top of my head. I forget the exact number. Uh, but yeah, anyways. So these are going to be the old X-band antennas. Right there you've got the K-band antennas, which are higher frequency, therefore shorter wavelength, smaller wavelength, and so they're able to design the antenna uh, more compactly. Is that the word? I guess. Yeah, it's a more compact antenna. And so just due to the higher frequency and shorter wavelength, it just you're able to make a smaller antenna. So that right there, we've got uh, the K-band antenna. And then finally, moving over to KA, again, we've got higher frequency, we've got shorter wavelength, and so we're able to make a compact antenna. So awesome. There you go. There's a look at uh, a bunch of different radar antennas. Um, oh, actually, what I could also do is, let's see, where did that, there it is. Uh, right here, you know how for KA band antennas we've got uh, 33.8, 34.7, and 35.5? Uh, let's go ahead and actually put that together so you guys can see. Um, here we go, here's 33.8, here's 34.7, and here is 35.5, and we'll kind of line them up this way. Uh, these ones, of course, because of the handheld gun, it is going to be shortened so that uh, you've got, you know, not the entire antenna is self-contained there. You've got some of the antenna and then the rest is all back there. So this is going to be a little bit longer. But uh, MPH B3, Stalker 2, Custom Golden Eagle. We've got 33.8, 34.7, and 35.5. You can see they're all going to be pretty much the same sort of size. Uh, some a little bit larger. I mean, there are some small differences. Like these ones, they use a metal exterior. Uh, this one, it's got actually a plastic housing to it. Okay, whatever. You know, small little design choices. Whatever, not too big of a deal. But they're all pretty much going to be the same size, the same idea. So, cool. Well, there you go. Um, yeah, anyways, there you go. There's a look at a uh, couple different technologies that are used actually for... Uh, the police antennas, everything from the pyramid-shaped antennas, linearly polarized, to the circularly polarized conical antennas, to the linearly polarized patch antennas. And then we've got a variety of ways of actually short shortening an antenna once they're actually designed. A full-length K-band antenna, shortened K-band antenna with the lens here on the front, 
and then the patch antennas on K-band, which are going to be the more, most compact ones. Uh, this is also available uh, in K-A-band. I don't happen to have one of them available with me, but the Decatur Genesis 2 is available in a, a K-band antenna like this, a K-A-band antenna like this, or actually a K-A-band antenna like this, except more compact because, well, you know, it's K-A-band and not K-band, right? So more compact, just like you can see over here on the right, a K-A-band version of this will be uh, even more compact, just like we can see X, K, K-A, awesome. And then, yeah, <laughs> as far as the different bands and stuff, X-band, K-band, K-A-band, awesome. Older, newer, larger, smaller, great. So, whoo, yeah, there you go. There's a look at a couple different types of uh, antennas, different technologies, different ideas, different designs, uh, different ways of building them and, uh, you know, kind of tweaking things to create different effects and uh, experiences. So, awesome, there you go. Um, hope that's been fun for you guys. I know it's been fun for me. I've, been wanting to do this kind of video for a long time and I'm really really happy to have finally created it so yeah thanks for watching if you've made it this far awesome glad to hear you're a radar antenna nerd like me or you're just wildly curious for some reason or maybe you're just bored I don't know anyways if you like this kind of stuff I'll go ahead and put a subscribe button down in the lower right hand corner click on that and you'll get uh, updated with more information and more videos as I post them so great thanks so much for watching and uh, I will see you guys later cheers bye